at last, we are finally at the final GX archetype for now that I've prepared to do on the channel, and today we're talking about Archfiends used by Titan in the... Well, first he was a hired mercenary in the show, and then later become one of the Seven Stars Assassins. And yeah, he used Archfiends, which could be a precursor to, in some form or fashion, to synchro up psychics. As in, they require life points to function. So anyway, let's start off with the first monster, that being the level 2 Vile Pawn Archfiend. The controller of this card pays 500 life points during each of his or her end phases. This is not optional. When this card is targeted by the effect of a card controlled by your opponent, when, re when resolving the effect, roll a six-sided die. If the result is three, negate the effect and destroy the opponent's card. As long as this card remains on the field, your opponent cannot attack any Archfiend monster cards on your side of the field except Vile Pawn Archfiend. Now, this actually sets up the basis for several c cards in the archetype, as in the first uh, wave of support for this archetype were known as the Chess Archfiends, because Vile Pawn Archfiend is of course based on the pawn figure of Chess. And, yeah, paying uh, 500 life points to, you know, just be there. And... Yeah, having uh, having non-targeting uh, protection, which is for the time actually pretty all right, pretty nice to have, especially on a level two monster such as this one. Yeah, but the thing about this is that the result uh, specifically needs to be three in order to uh, get this uh, get the protection uh, off of this thing because you, we don't want the, uh, as generic results as snipe hunters. Uh, from two to five, in order to uh, in order to maintain the protection going. And as for the last effect, it, we don't have a solar flare, flare dragon going on because it doesn't say except this one. Meaning, if you control two wild pawn archfiends, your opponent can simply choose which one to attack, and not and he's not prevented from attacking in other ways. Anyways. As impressive as he as he is for the time of his release, he's not worth running because he is just pathetic in every sense of the word. And we'll see later on that the archetype offers much better playmakers and combo pieces. Uh, th th those being not the checks, uh, the sh uh, the chess arch fiends, but the the newer later support, which we'll get into later, and. Next up in the chest lineup we have Dark Bishop Archfiend. This one's a level 3 with 300 attack and 1400 defense and the control of this card is 500 life points during the, uh, each of uh, his, his or her standby phases. This is not optional. When an Archfiend monster card on your field is targeted by the effect of a card controlled by your opponent, uh, when resolving the effect, roll a 6 sided die. If the result is 1, 3 or 6, the effect negate the effect and destroy the opponent's card. Now this one is miles better than Vile Pawn Archfiend because uh, it isn't limited to himself and the die results can be one, uh, three numbers instead of one, which is basically miles better than the uh, than Vile Pawn Archfiend. And but the thing is, he does not have any additional effects of his own, so he might be considered a bit of a risque choice and well, a tech choice in general to consider running, so... Yeah. Their next monster is Desrook Archfiend, which is the representative of the Rook piece in the, che uh, in the chess game, and his effect is a bit different. This card control okay, uh, pays 500 life points during each of uh, his or her standby phases. This is not optional. When this card is targeted by the effect of a card controlled by your opponent, when resolving the effect for all six sided dive, the result is again three. Negate the effect and destroy the opponent's card. When, te when a Terror King Archfiend on your f uh, side of the field uh, is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to special summon Terror King, Arch uh, Terror King Archfiend from your graveyard. Okay, so the while he's on the field, he's basically no worse than Vile Pawn Archfiend. He actually, he has a bit of a higher defense than him, but overall he's 
not very good. But his hand effect is actually um, pretty unique, but not in a good way. It only activates when a specific Archfiend monster, which we'll get into later, much later, uh, in fact, is destroyed only by... Uh, uh, well, it, it doesn't have to be destroyed only by battle. I thought it was only by battle, but... Yeah. Overall, if you run that thing, you you could make uh, run a few copies of that, but you, that the monster it protects is rarely ever ran, so neither is this one. Stepping into the new support for a short while, we have Archfiend Eris. If this card is sent to the graveyard because of a card effect or being destroyed by battle, you can add one Archfiend card from your deck to your hand, except Archfiend Eris. You can only use this effect of Archfiend Eris once per turn. Okay, so this one is actually a very nice uh, nice piece of support, uh, no question about it. So yeah, it searches out any uh, a m member of the archetype and any basically card of the archetype, which is actually lovely, but the but the effect is a, a, a bit outdated in terms of how it uh, how she does it because she needs to be popped by a card effect or battle if she were like sent to the graveyard by any means or leaves the field uh, in any means that it, she would be much better but considering her time of release she uh, she was actually a pretty versatile searcher so I cannot uh, complain too much there, uh, speaking of searchers, with their other searcher is Archfiend General with 2100 attack for a level 4, which is like beyond massive. You can discard this card to the graveyard, add one Pandemonium from your deck to your hand. If this card is on the field but Pandemonium is not on the field, destroy this card. So yeah, this is actually a very nice field searcher. I believe it has the biggest stats among these field searchers. For the field spell it searches, we'll get to that later, but yeah. Uh, you tend you usually don't tend to run this uh, field spell as much as you used to be before the new archfiends were a thing, because the new archfiends don't require pay pay payment of life points uh, in order to function. So yeah, archfiend general uh, usually is ran at one when playing pandemonium. Their next monster is Archfiend Cavalry. If this card is uh, on the field is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Archfiend monster in your graveyard except like Archfiend Cavalry special summon, but it cannot attack this turn. Just a mediocre revival card, not nothing else to pretty much add to this because yeah. Um uh, I mean, you can revive your fallen boss monsters with this, but come on, who would want to waste a card effect on a level 4 1900 attack beater? Yeah, let's get realistic here. Their next monster is Trance Archfiend. Once per turn, you can discard one Fiend monster, and if you do, this card gains 500 attack until the end of this turn. When this card you control is destroyed and sent and is sent to the to your graveyard, you can target one one of your banished dark monsters, add that target to your hand. Okay, the ar archetype doesn't offer much setup tools in order uh, in order to set up the uh, g g in order to even banish cards from the graveyard. So I am not even sure what the purpose of the second effect is supposed to be, and the first effect is outdated as it uh, ever could have been. So yeah, not worth running at all in an archfiend deck. Returning to Chess Knights a little bit, we have Shadow Knight Archfiend, which represent, of course, the knight uh, piece, or the horsey as I like to call him. Uh, the control of this card pays 900 life points during each of her end phases. Or his. Okay, this is not optional, of course. And when this card is targeted by the effect of a card, you're... Uh, controlled by your opponent. When resolving this effect, roll a six-sided die. If the if the result is, of course, again three, uh, negate the effect, and if you do, uh, and destroy the opponent's card. The battle damage this card inflicts to your opponent is halved. Okay, so I guess I could actually call this one the worst one, uh, worst one, even ignoring Wild Pawn Archfiend for a second there. The 
life point page is the highest for now, almost a 1000 life points page, and uh, the targeting protection, of course, you have to land a very specific single number, and why the hell is all damage this thing inflicts halved? Yeah, this was back in the day when monsters with 2000 attacks were considered an immense beast, so they had to be restri uh, restricted uh, with vile powers and anything uh, to uh, to help the poor meta from getting uh, getting its skin teared uh, getting uh, getting its skin teared very very quickly so yeah shadow knight is the embodiment of that and it's not a very good card in general and i actually don't consider it worth running their next card is the infernal queen archfiend the queen counterpart of the chess archfiends uh, it has 900 attack and 1500 defense, fire monster, and this card uh, controller pays 500 life points during each of, her, uh, each of his or her hand phases, this is not optional, and this card is targeted by the effect of a card controlled by your opponent re when resolving the effect, roll a 6 sided die, if the result is 2 or 5, negate the effect and, uh, and destroy the opponent's card, as long as this card remains face up on the field. During each standby phase, incre increase the attack of the one Archfiend monster you control by 1000 until the end phase. Okay, back in slower variants, this was um, very pr acceptable to, re uh, to run because the 1000 attack could be a bit uh, tricky for the opponent at the time to, you know, get over. But nowadays, this is actually a very slow boost, so I am actually don't consider this worth running. And now for the monster that was mentioned by Deathrook Archfiend, we have Terror King Archfiend, which is the king counterpart of the Chess Archfiends. Uh, it's a level 4 with another 2000 attack, and this card cannot be normal summoned or flipped uh, summoned unless, you ha unless an Archfiend monster card is on, the, on your side of the field. This card's controller uh, pays 800 life points during each of uh, his or her end fa uh, standby phases, and this is not optional. And when this card is targeted by the effect of a card controlled by your opponent, when resolving the effect, roll a six-sided die. If the result is two or five, negate the, uh, the effect and destroy uh, no, the opponent's card. The effect of an eff effect monster th that this card is uh, destroyed as a result of a battle are negated. Okay, so the, the the last effect basically shuts down the graveyard effects, which is actually a huge deal nowadays, but uh, again, this is actually a very outdated beat stick with not not so uh, not so good overall effects if we ignore the second effect. Requires 800 life points to pay uh, to maintain him on the field unless their field spell is up. We'll get to that. And it cannot be normal summoned or set unless you control another Archfiend monster, which is a huge brick nowadays. And overall, if you actually prefer running him, you'll have to do, you'll have to run some very specific archetypal support, which is a bit too far and often between. So yeah, run by preference. Next up we have Pandemonium Watchbear. As long as this card remains face up on the, your side of the field, Pandemonium on your side of the field is not destroyed by, by your opponent's card effect. Neat idea, we'll get to their uh, field spell soon, but the monster itself is a very frail level 4, so... I have no idea what the hell were they thinking when they made this. Sure, 1800 defense is kinda decent, but not as decent to warrant running this at 2 or 3. Their next monster is their first tribute monster, Mist Archfiend. It's a level 5 with 2400 attack and 0 defense, and you can normal summon this card without tributing. Once per turn, during, your en during the end phase, if this card was summoned this way, destroy this card. If you do, take 1000 damage. Oh, it's uh, basically an Archfiend flavor mecha, uh, mecha Beast Oka, or whatever he's called. Fairy Beast Oka, I don't know. And yeah, continues with the life point burn legacy of the card, but yeah, this is most likely used as a OTK enabler or final cowboy for game card uh, card equivalent to Archfiends, and I, kn I know it works pretty well, but 
Yeah, I, I would actually prefer you running the regular cowboy, uh, ga 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 cowboy that is, if you want to en enact the cowboy for game status in Yu-Gi-Oh. But yeah, um, overall this is a uh, this is a preferency card if you want to consider it running. So yeah, run by preference. Their next monster is their level 6 Archfiend Giant. All 20, uh, 2400, and 16, uh, 2400 attack and 1600 attack Fiend uh, with this effect. If this face up card on the field would be destroyed by a card effect, you can pay 500 life points instead. This effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field. If this card is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Archfiend monster from your hand. Uh, okay, I would actually have loved if the regular Archfiend, the Chess Archfiend, had that pr had this protection effect from uh, to begin with, all of them being 500, of course. And I would have also loved to uh, loved them to have this floating effect. But no, they save it for a level six beat stick, which is not usually tend to, uh, which uh, you not usually tend to run in this deck because. There are so many better options here, so yeah, it's not gonna matter in the long run. Their next level 6 is Archfiend Commander, a uh, fiend with 2500 attack and 1200 defense, some summon skull nostalgia there. And if you control an Archfiend card, you can special summon this card from your hand, but it cannot attack this turn. You can only special summon Archfiend Commander once per turn this way. When special summoned this way, target one Archfiend card you control, destroy that target. And when this card is tribute summoned, you can target one level 6 Archfiend monster in your graveyard, special summon that target in face up defense position. Uh, yeah, this is actually the first Archfiend monster with a special summoning condition, and it's pretty damn good. However, I find it very bizarre. Why would you want to destroy your. Uh, why why you have to destroy your archfiend cards when the when you summon this card this way by by the way of special summon and yeah it also if you actually tribute summon this you actually get another level 6 archfiend out into the field which is also very lovely so yeah uh de definitely worth running at least one of these in an archfiend deck so yeah you should go wild all right, back uh, going back to the chess archfiend for a uh, for a bit. Uh, we have skull archfiend of lightning. Yet another summon skull uh, representative, nostalgia representative, and you really can't uh, tell because of the artwork and the stats and the level and the and the attribute. Yeah. And during each of your standby phases, you must pay 500 life points. So this is not optional or the or this card is destroyed. Before resolving an opponent's card effects that target this card, roll a six-sided die. Negate the effect if you can roll one, three, or six, and, and if you do, destroy that card. So, as for this supposed final boss monster that transcends all the chess pieces of the chess archfiend, this is actually pretty damn disappointing. It doesn't have any effects of its own, just the regular archfiend protection, which is by far the best one so far and nothing else I mean it is a high level beat uh, it is a high attack beat stick but you could have at least g uh, gotten an effect where I don't know when this card destroys a battle uh, destroys a monster by battle you can maybe add an archfiend from your graveyard to your hand or something like that this w this would have been lovely then but no it's actually a very generic beat stick and not very good uh, overall. Now actually this is an, uh, a card that is uh, that actually falls under two archetypes, those being Zera and Archfiend, that being Mazera Deville. It's a level 8 Fiend with 2800 attack and 2300 defense and this card cannot be normal summoned or set and this card cannot be special summoned except by tributing one fa face of Warrior of Zera on your side of the field. Uh, while Pandemonium is on the f uh, field, if Pandemonium is on your side, well, Pandemonium is on the field. Yeah, this uh, the Pandemonium must be on the field if you want to summon this thing. This is basically a, a, a devil counterpart to Arclord Zerato. So yeah, if Pandemonium is on, on your field, 
If Anemonium's on your side of the field, when you special summon this card, your opponent discards three random cards from his hand. And if, if Anemonium is not uh, not uh, if Phenomonium is not on your side of the field, this effect is not on applied. So actually, what we have here is a somewhat of a prototype to Gumblar Dragon. So uh, overall, this effect is yeah could be a pretty busted. But the fact is, you don't run Warrior of Zera in Archfiends if your life depended on it. So uh, you d usually don't run this as well. Yeah, a bit of a disappointment there. But this effect was still very unique. So. I guess I could cut it some slack, but I'm gonna be fair and judge it for it. And now we go on to their full-on last uh, wave of support, that being Imprisoned Queen Archfiend. During each of your uh, uh, standby phases, you must pay 1,000 life points. Uh, or this uh, this is not optional, or this card is destroyed. During your standby phase, target one level 4 or lower fiend monster on the field. That target gains 1000 attack until the end of the f uh, until the end phase. Pandemonium must be on the field uh, and this card must be uh, in your graveyard to activate and resolve this effect. Okay, so basically this is a retreat to Queen uh, Infernal Queen Archfiend and uh, it's actually a bit more consistent than the regular queen because while this is a high level high level beat stick uh, it being in the graveyard to resolve the boost effect actually makes it more consistent because the effect activates from the graveyard meaning the opponent cannot negate it so oh yeah this is actually a pretty cool card a very excellent trade-in target, so you can easily set up the graveyard effect for this and run a copy of two. It couldn't possibly hurt. Their next monster is the absolutely gorgeous-looking Archfiend Empress. Look at her. Her artwork is simply amazing. However, the effect is a borderline garbage if you really want to stretch it. If exactly one face-up Dark Fiend mo type monster on the field. Uh, field except this card would be destroyed. You can remove from play one dark fiend monster, uh, fiend type monster from your graveyard instead. When this card uh, is destroyed and sent from the field to the graveyard, you can select one level six or higher dark fiend type monster in your graveyard except dark fiend empress and special summon it. So for an arc artwork this gorgeous and kick ass, what you get is. Well, so far the only effect that ben con conjuncts well with uh, Trans Archfiend resummoning when she's destroyed. It only resummons boss monsters, which not might might not be available at the time. So yeah, or, or overall it's it's their second highest beat stick. When, if we were really want to stretch it there, again it's also a trade in target. So yeah. Run by preference, one, one at max if you feel like it. Uh, their final boss monster is Archfiend Emperor, the first Lord of Horror. It has 3000 attack and 2000 defense, and you can normal summon this card without tributing, but its original attack and defense become halved. If this card is summoned this way, this card is destroyed during the end phase. You cannot special summon mo any monsters except Fiend monsters, once per turn, you can banish one Archfiend monster from your hand or graveyard and then target one card on the field and destroy it. So, overall, this is actually a very bo uh, a very nice boss monster, even though it can pr uh, remain on the field for only one turn. That one turn can turn the tide of the duel around with this card's effect very uh, quickly because it can uh, destroy any card on the field for banishing one monster, which is yet another effect that conjuncts with. Uh, Trans Archfiend, still though that doesn't make Trans Archfiend any more arrest, any more runnable, so yeah. Uh, again, a trading target searchable by Archfiend Heiress, so yeah, what's not to like? Oh, definitely run two or three of these at all times. They're, uh, one of their other monsters is their Pendulum Monster, their only Pendulum Monster that being Archfiend Eccentric. Scale 7, 800 attack and 1000 defense, basically a reverse stats of Archfiend Heiress. And its pendulum effect is that you can target one other spell and trap on the field, destroy both this and this, uh, both it and this card. You 
could only use this effect once per turn and its monster effect is that you can tribute this card to then target one monster on the field and destroy it. You can only use this effect of Archfiend Eccentric once per turn. Okay, so this thing came out I think in the Yuya structure deck I'm, I believe, so yeah, I, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, this these are not quick effects, so yeah, this uh, this card's utility is high, severely dampened. However, it can be used as a prototypal Diamond Dire Wolf. Well, uh, an, on a, on a, an easier to summon alternative to Dom Diamond Dire Wolf. So yeah, it could be a bit. Uh, its usage is a bit is a bit dampened, but. Yeah, you usually run this at once, so goodbye. And you usually don't run it at all because you don't want pendulums clogging up your extra deck. And our final monster is Archfiend Soldier, with a vanilla with 1900 attack. If you prefer running uh, Rescue Rabbit, you should have a field date with this thing, so yeah. Uh, run this if you want to uh, make a r Rescue Rabbit variant. Moving on to their extra deck monster, their final monster, that being Master King Archfiend. It's a, a link monster which requires two fiend type monsters, points bottom left and bottom right, 2000 attack. And once per turn, during each uh, during your standby phase, pay 500 life points or destroy this card. Once per chain, if you pay your life points except during the damage step, you can send one fiend monster from uh, your deck to the graveyard with attack and de or defense equal to the amount paid. Once per chain, if a fiend monster you control is sent to the graveyard, uh, except during the damage step, you can uh, roll a six-sided die and apply the effect b based on the. Uh, ba uh, uh, you can apply then apply the eff this effect on one of those monsters based on the result. Jesus, what the hell happened there? One, add it to your hand. Two, three, four, or five. Shuffle it into the deck and six special summon it. So actually, this is actually a pretty uh, cool-looking boss monster. It very easily synergizes with the playstyle of the deck, especially chess archfiends, and its, its restriction is made uh, very, um, very much obsolete when their uh, when their field spell is up. And yeah, you, it, it actually benefits from uh, rolling any part of the six-sided die, uh, even though two, three, four, or five are. Well, unless it gives you a free card to draw, it's a bit too risky to consider getting those results. So yeah, you need to be careful there. So yeah, Master King Archfiend is usually ran at 3 at all times in any Archfiend build. So yeah, go wild with him, I say. Alright, now moving on to their spell and trap support. First up, we have the field spell mentioned so many times, Pandemonium. And its effect is, neither player has to pay life points during the standby phase nor Archfiend, uh, for Archfiend monsters. Each time a player's Archfiend monster is destroyed and sent to the graveyard except by battle, the player that can add one Archfiend monster from their deck to their hand uh, that is a lower level than the destroyed card. Okay, so the first effect man, just flat out uh, removes the effect of paying 500 life points in order to keep the monsters uh, out on the field, what the hell. Um, and the second effect, uh, while it sounds neat, but just like Vampire Genesis, you lose the... you quickly... Um, you quickly run out of monsters to cycle through, so yeah, it can be a bit limited there, so... but anyway, Pandemonium is usually around 2 or 3 in, uh, in most basic Archfiend builds, so yeah. But they have another field spell known as Archfiend Palabyrinth. All fiend type monsters you control gain 500 attack. You can target one archfiend monster you control, banish one other fiend type monster you control, and if you do a special summon from your hand, deck, or graveyard, one archfiend monster with the same level as the targeted monster, and you can only use each effect of archfiend palabyrinth once per turn. As great of as an effect this is, I'm actually inclined to see that pandemonium is still a better option. Don't get me wrong, you can still get a mileage when running at least one a copy of this, but uh, the level thing is a bit too restrictive for my uh, taste in this card, and this uh, this card has it um, has it in spades, so yeah, run one or two uh, uh, run one or two of these and 
you can get a, a somewhat of a more mileage out of this if you pair it up with a set rotation as well. Their next spell card is uh, Archfiend's Oath, a continuous spell. And once per turn you can pay 500 life points and declare one card name. Excavate the top card of your deck and if, uh, if it is the declared card, add it to your hand, otherwise send it to the graveyard. Um, I Again, it's a um, bit of a generic card which, which conjuncts with, well, with Convulsion of Nature of all things. But Archfiends really don't benefit much from this kind of effect, so I don't really see much use in running this, so yeah. Run by preference. Next up we have the equip spell Falling Down. Activate this card by targeting an opponent's monster. Equip this card to it, take control of it. Destroy this card unless you control an Archfiend uh, card. During each of your opponent's standby phases you take 800 damage. This thing is not... Uh, the last thing is not m meant to matter in the long run since you most likely are gonna tribute the monster you are. Uh, taking control of in order to summon a monster or to maybe trigger some effects, anything. Basically to get rid of it to make you uh, escape the paying of 800 life points, so yeah. Again, on the gimmicky side, so yeah, I would uh, I would advise running one or two of these. Uh, next up we have their final spell card, Checkmate. Tribute one Archfiend monster on your side of the field. During this turn, one Terror King Archfiend on your side of the field can attack your opponents directly this turn. Or you can be not a complete idiot and just run Infected Male instead. How handy. Next up we have their first trap card at Archfiend's Roar. Pay 500 life points, then target one Archfiend monster in your graveyard, special summon the target. It cannot be tributed and destroyed during the end phase of this turn. Uh, okay, so basically you summon this thing in order to make extra deck plays basically since you cannot attribute it to some of their high attack beaters and it is their archetype of monster Rayborn so I would advise running three of these. Next up we have the continuous trap card Battle Scarred. Uh, select one Archfiend monster on your field and uh, uh, on your side of the field uh, to activate this card. Your opponent also pays the same amount of life points that you pay f uh, for the selected monster during the standby phase. If this card is removed from the field, destroy the selected monster, and when uh, the selected monster is removed from the field, destroy this card. Okay, so this is basically dumpster fire in its finest. You basically don't ever want to pay life points in order to uh, maintain the Archfiends onto the field, and most Archfiends that do require payment of life points are not usually ran. So some of the better ones are, but most of them are not. And seeing as the pandemonium is a thing, yeah, sorry buddy, but I'm not interested. You don't don't ever run uh, think about running this unless you you think it's cool to be in 2003. Next up we have Call of the Archfiend, their final t t their final card and their other continuous trap card. You can target one level 5 or higher fiend monster in your graveyard, discard one fiend monster and if you do, special summon the targeted monster and you can only use this effect of Call of the Archfiend once per turn. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but this is actually more of a Dark World support card than an Archfiend support card. Still though, they actually can be a bit useful, so I would advise running a copy of two, but... Yeah, it can be a bit too cloggy, so don't go uh, too crazy with it. Alright, time for the grades. Their consistency is a bit on the flimsy side, because... Yeah, most of it... Most of the archetype does not uh, benefit uh, any form of searching besides... Uh, Master King Archfiend, which is a link monster, so... Yeah, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna be... G give it a 1 out of 3 because it requires a, an absurd amount of setup for the most basic of searching. Power is also a, um, also a 1 out of 3 because the power output usually doesn't extend beyond to 2500 which is uh, which is the maximum amount of the boss monsters you t usually tend to run. Terror King is usually summoned with 1500 attack unless you revive it with something so uh, yeah. Comeback ability usually depends on some uh, some very specific cards, archetypal and non-archetypal, so yeah, uh, usually re depends on the thing, uh, Archfiend's Roar, which is, again, destroys the monster, it resummons during the, uh, during the end phase, so yeah, 
while it's certainly there, it's not as good as you might think, so I'm actually gonna give it a 1 out of 3 there. Protection exists, but it's a bit too outdated, but for the fact that they have it for their time period, and every single monster that has targeting protection, well, it's entirely luck-based, I'm actually gonna give be a really generous scenario and give him a 2 out of 3 in protection. And as for the versatility, yeah, they can be splashed into Dark Worlds, maybe, something. Yeah, I don't know, they can be, they can be splashable in some other dark, uh, dark themed decks, but they're usually, it's usually not something, uh, not something to benefit them very highly, so yeah, I'm gonna give them a 1 out of 3 there. Wow, for 30 cards, these are these cards turned out very, very mediocre. I wouldn't have never expected that, so... Yeah, those were Archfiends. They didn't receive any support until Master King Archfiend. And, yeah, I'm not sure if the... If they will ever receive any other support. Well, Master King Archfiend is one thing, but other stuff is... Something that... Uh remains to be seen basically so yeah and f uh, next up we're going to s step away from the GX era for a very long time and I think we'll be ever coming back to the GX era so yeah next time uh, next time around we'll be going on to the 5Ds era once more for this marathon ish experience of archetype analysis Thank you all so much for watching, stay tuned for more vids, work and updates, comment and like, and subscribe, and as usual, I'll upload the next vid whenever I can. See you all, have a good day, and peace.